I've been playing your brand new track, Magnificent, now for a couple of weeks, and our listeners are absolutely loving it. So I was wondering if you could start off by telling us, if you could start off by telling us a little bit about what inspired the track. Well, actually, it was uh, it was written for me, uh, or rather for one of the songs that I asked uh, to listen to. Um, uh, Gary Simmons, who runs a small label that I'm wi- that I'm with, uh, was looking for songs for me, and he sent me some songs, and one of them was magnificent. And he said to me, "You've got to listen to this track. This is up your street." And um, I listened to the track, and I absolutely loved it. Obviously, it didn't sound the way it does now. And um, and uh, I listened to the track, and I thought, uh, when I saw the name of who wrote it, um, was Charlie Mason. And I thought I'd worked with Charlie before, and I told uh, Gary that I know the songwriter. He wrote me two other songs before. And uh, anyway, so yeah, that's that's how that came about. When you're reading through lyrics like that from a songwriter, how do you know that a song is perfect for you? Is there something that kind of stands out for you so that you know that is the perfect track for you to record? Yeah, the lyrics are important uh, because when I go into the recording booth, I want to sing them with uh, belief. I want to believe what I'm singing. And usually when I'm given demos i can hear beyond what they could sound like i can hear my voice on it because every person's voice will change a song um and uh when i listen to uh, magnificent you know there's there was some of my obviously my personality that i added to it some of the the melody that i changed when i went to this into the studio because that just happens you know when you when i'm warmed up i just fly away and just do my thing now, a lot of people here in Australia have been asking, because we're playing this track, is this something part of something bigger? Can we expect an album from you? Can we expect new singles from you as well? Absolutely. There's an album to come from this. Um, last year, I released a, a track from the album that's going to come out called Turn on the Light, which did very, very well. And so Magnificent is actually the second track to be released from the album that I'm recording. Um, so I had one more... Uh, track left to record and then the lockdown happened no one could move anywhere so um so we've still got that one more track but you know magnificent came out here about uh, early may on the 4th of may to be exact um so it's still a, a new track it's a couple of months old if that and we'll just go with it until i'm able to go back into the studio finish that one more track uh, that's left behind and um, take it on from there What can you tell us about the album? Is the tracks that we've heard so far, are they kind of what we can expect from the rest of the album as well? There's a mixture of different dimensions to the album. When Gary and I um, spoke about what what we both want to achieve for the album, Gary said, uh, you know, I don't want and neither did I want songs that were from beginning to end uh, all the way with your hands up. I wanted some mid-tempo tracks. There's a couple of ballads in there as well. Um, and there's some covers, covers that were done maybe in the 60s and the 70s that people will never think I would do. Um, so I'm really excited. Yeah, without giving it away in case you can't, um, the covers, <laughs> what made you pick those songs to cover? And what is it like going into a studio to record a track that has already had a great life with another artist? Yeah, well, you know, the ones that uh, I chose were songs that I loved in my childhood when I was growing up and now I'm here and I'm thinking well they're about 30 40 maybe even 50 years old um and I loved them in my childhood that's what I was going out to dance to um and when I spoke to Gary Gary was also of the same mind and you know we changed them a bit but we, we kept very much to the structure of what those songs are but we've sort of modernized them and I think you know um it's it's homage to paying homage to the artists that have uh, originally done the track before myself. Yeah, you mentioned that you had to put the album on hold because of the lockdown. Now our country has just gone back into lockdown today. Um, oh, has it? Oh my! Yeah, because um, we had a few spikes in numbers. How did you spend the lockdown? Did you spend that time cre- in a creative mood, or did you spend that time just kind of re-energizing the batteries? 
Well, uh, I, I obviously I, I spent it re-energizing my batteries because I was doing so many shows that my voice actually began to get quite hoarse and quite tired. And then I went to see um, a throat specialist, voice specialist, and he said to me, "Oh no, you, your voice is fine. You just uh, are allergic to the pollen in the air. That uh, that's what's making your voice begin to sound really hoarse and tired, which is something I never knew. I was so shocked. So <laughs> I've had time to." Uh, relax my voice and uh, I'm learning piano I'm, I'm currently doing my grade four so I think my piano teacher will be happy with me because it's given me time to practice my pieces even more so and just you know spend time at home with my hobby and um, yeah catch up on uh, Netflix <laughs> yeah you're such a musical person what sparked that interest in learning to play the piano oh my gosh I wanted to play piano from day dot and uh, my mom and dad, I remember I used to say to them, oh, I want to do piano lessons, I want to do piano lessons. And I think, you know, we didn't have enough money. There was so much going on in the family then. Uh, many years later, I thought, you know what, I can afford to now um, pay uh, for my piano practice lessons. I'm going to do this. And uh, my husband's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he bought me a, a secondhand piano about four years ago. And he, was, he, he admitted to me and he said, I was thinking, She's not going to play the piano. This is just all for, for nothing. Um, but here we are, you know, I'm moving on and playing, um, getting ready to sit my grade four exams. But again, with the lockdown, who knows that when that will happen as well. So it's, uh, it's a childhood ambition I've, I've always wanted to do. Oh, definitely. And, and good luck with those exams too when they come around. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. Your last single, Turn on the Light, it got played by 500 radio stations right around the world. That must be something that you sit back as an artist and, and really feel proud of, that people right around the world are, are embracing your music like this. It's staggering. Honestly, it's really staggering to me. It's... Uh, will always be a humbling experience and honestly when I hear my tracks being played on radio and you know I'm driving in the car or I'm passing a shop and I can hear my song I really get a shock because it will always be a, a surreal experience for me and I, I just remain so grateful and humbled so again I want to thank you it's people like you that you know have kept my profile raised and have kept me out there working and and doing my thing Oh, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I've got to ask, does that mean that there's a chance that we might see you tour in Australia at some time soon? Oh, I certainly hope so. Oh, my gosh. I've had the opportunity to travel to Australia twice in my lifetime. I think I came to Australia the last time was, mm, I think, oh, gosh, I can't remember when. There was an, a, a, a dance show called If You Think You Can Dance or something to that effect. Yep. And apparently... Everybody's free to feel good uh, went back into your top 40 charts. So I came down to do a, a few shows and a, a few TV shows, and that was just fantastic. I just absolutely loved it. I think it was somewhere around 2008, 2009. I think. Yeah. You mentioned Everybody's Free. That is such an iconic track, especially here in Australia. And you've had such an amazing career touring with Michael Jackson, meeting Al Pacino. What's been the highlights for you over that time? Gosh, I have to say, career-wise, uh, my highlight um, in my career was having a support act, uh, was being a support act to Michael Jackson. I mean, you know, he did his last tour in 1992. I was his support act for it. And that was his last tour ever. And to be asked to per perform and be a support act for the world's biggest star, in my opinion at that time, was just a surreal experience. And I'll be eternally grateful to him for that. I have to ask, what do you say when you meet somebody of the caliber of Michael Jackson backstage at a show? Were you were you too nervous to talk to him, or what do you say? I, <laughs> I was so nervous, but you know, obviously, I I just signed uh, to Sony, who Michael was uh, signed with as well, and you know, I had um, the guts to uh, go up to him the one time. In fact, he he asked to meet me. Uh, he personally chose me to be on his tour because at the time, everybody's free to feel good. Are you ready to fly? Faith and the Power of Love were really doing so well across Europe for me. And uh, he personally chose me to be his support act across his European leg of his tour. And so I had some sort of, um, you know, strength to to uh, go up to Michael 
and say, you know, hey, thank you so much for choosing me. And he asked to meet me again a second time. It was towards the end of the tour, which was, I believe, uh, in Portugal. And I just said, thank you so much for this opportunity. And he hugged me and he gave me a kiss. And he really, really was a nice guy. He really was. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. Well, I think it's time on our show now to take another listen to Magnificent. I want to thank you so much for coming on our show today. And is there anything you would like to say to our listeners before they take another listen to Magnificent? Yes, I would. I would. I I just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for your support and for your love. And it means the world to me. And you helped give me a a career and to continue going out there and performing and making music. So thank you so much. And thanks to you as well, Darren, for, for playing my songs because, you know, you keep me going. So thank you. Not a problem. Like I said, it's an absolute. <laughs> That's all right. Not a problem. Like I said, it's been an absolute pleasure playing your music over the years, and uh, hopefully we do get to see you sometime soon in back in Australia. I can't wait. I look forward to it. I look forward to it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, have a great day, and uh, we'll hopefully we get to chat again in the future. I hope so too, my darling. Thank you so so very much. Not a problem. Thank you. All right. Bye. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. Bye.